bad audio equals bad video. It is what it is. Hey, Power Director peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love from PowerDirectorUniversity.com. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the audio editor in PowerDirector 17. If you've been having issues with your audio and you came here to see how to fix it, I want you to put hashtag audio madness in the comment section below. All right, Power Director peeps, I kept you waiting long enough. Let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in PowerDirector 17. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. And if you subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell to get notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. Let's get our sound right. The audio director is a new feature in Power Director 17. It adds a lot of professional audio editing functions to the program. Most of the options in this tool were only available using audio director or using alternative programs like Audition and Audacity. Now they're built right into Power Director and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use them. As you can see, I have a clip in the timeline of a family at the beach and it has some music and some sound of the ocean. So there's a few different ways that you can get to the audio editor. If I left click this, I can go to tools and then I can go down to audio editor or I can right click on the clip, go to edit audio and then go to audio editor. So there's a lot of tools on here. The first thing I want to do with this track or the audio in this clip is reduce the volume of any loud sounds in the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the dynamic range compressor. And here I'm going to focus on the uh, compressor section right now. So the first thing I'm going to change is the threshold. Now the threshold is how loud the signal has to be before it adds compression and lowers the volume. And I'm gonna set that to uh, 15 dBs. The next thing that we have on here is the ratio. And the ratio is how much compression is applied. So I'm gonna change that to uh, 2.5 to one. And the next option is attack. And attack is how quickly the compressor starts to work. I'm gonna set that to seven milliseconds. And then we have release and release is how soon after the signal dips below the threshold that the compressor stops. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 100 milliseconds and I'm going to click on apply. And now you can see here that the waveform looks a little bit different than a second ago. If I click on the undo button, you'll see that it has peaks that are going to get larger. And if I click on redo, it brings them back down. So you can see the difference here on those clips. Now, the next thing that I want to do is warm up the bass in the music and get rid of some of that ocean sound. So I'm going to use the equalizer to do that. And I'm going to change this preset and I'm going to go to custom. So if you look at the equalizer interface across the top, you have your Hertz and on the sides, you have your decibels. So it really depends on how you want to do it. What changes you want to make uh, as far as the decibels go for each one of the different Hertz ranges that are on here. I'm going to make the changes that I think are going to help me bring out some warmth in the bass and get rid of a little bit of that ocean sound. And if you kind of play the preview, you could tell a difference in the sound. The 
lot more ocean sound in that original audio. And the bass is in his one. So there you go with that. I like how it is, so I'm gonna click on apply. And once again, if I click on undo, you see the changes right there. Good to go. So I don't really have any peaking or distortion on here that I can see, but I'm gonna show you how to change that. Um, you can get rid of any peaking or distortion using the limiter in the dynamic range compression tool. So I'm gonna go back to dynamic range compression. And I'm gonna focus on the limiter section this time around. So the reason why I didn't do this the first time I went into dynamic range control is because if I had done it then, it wouldn't have taken into account the boost that I added when I used the equalizers. So the threshold basically is going to lower anything that's stronger than the signal that I choose. So I'm gonna choose 2.5 decibels. And all the other settings have the same meaning as the ones that I explained when I was under the compressor settings. So I'm gonna do leave the ratio at a uh, one to one. I'm gonna change the attack to seven. And I'm going to leave the release at 100. Now, if you had anything above 2.5 decibels, then it should bring that down by applying this. So I'm gonna click on apply. And you probably won't see any changes to my audio because there was nothing that was above uh, 2.5. So we're good to go. The next thing I'd like to do is reduce any background noise. Now, usually you get background noise when you're recording in a studio or an open space or outside, things like that. So you want to reduce background noise utilizing this tool. Now, there's not going to be any background noise on here, but it's going to recognize the ocean as some background noise and it'll bring that down a little bit. So I'm cool with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. So what I wanna do is I wanna go to noise reduction and I'm gonna leave it on stationary. And for this, I'll just move the slider over a little bit. And I'll click on preview to see what it sounds like. And I'll compare it to the original audio. You can tell it's a little bit more noisy. I like that. I'll click on apply. And now I'm good to go. So I'm going to click on OK. And you see it applies the changes to the audio. And if I click on play. I like the way that sounds, people. So now let's talk about some of the other features in the audio editor. I have a clip of a song on the timeline. And I want to go in there and show you some of the other stuff. So I'm going to right click on this song. I'm gonna go to edit audio, and then I'm gonna go to audio editor. And so the first thing I'm gonna show you is the pitch shift. If I click on that, and I click on preview right now, it's on zero, so you won't really see any difference in the pitch, but if I move it over, you're gonna to start to see some changes. Yeah. That's the original. Show you what it sounds like. So I'm gonna hit cancel. That's pitch shift. There's also the vocal transformer. If I click on that, so again, it has some presets in here and then some changes to pitch and timber. So if I click on preview. So you turn into a little nasty man. He sounds like a little nasty guy or something, I don't know, pervert. So you got different things like robot. So 
So you see, he's got a bunch of different presets on here. I'm not going to go into all of them. So you got that option for the vocal transformer. Uh, you got echo. So let's click on that. And if we preview that. So you can, of course, play with that and make it sound better than that, but that's just an example. So that's Echo. Uh, you got Reverb. So let's preview this. Yeah. You got that. Uh, generate noise. If you want to add some noise, not going to go into that one. Uh, we got radio. You got phone. And then you got vocal removal. So this works best if the it's a stereo mix and the vocals are panned to the center. So you might still hear some of the vocals in here. So let's see what it sounds like. Sounds like he's whispering or something. And there you have it, people. How to edit audio in the new audio editor with PowerDirector 17. Don't forget to check out more of my content to learn how to use PowerDirector. If you decide that you like PowerDirector 17 and you want to buy or upgrade to this software, I'll leave some links in the video description that you can use to purchase it. Those are affiliate links, so if you use them, I'll get a small commission, which will help me continue to create content that teaches you how to use PowerDirector. You'll pay the same price as if you went to the site and bought it on your own. So, if you want to help me help you, use the affiliate link. All right, PowerDirector peeps, I want to thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end truly means the world to me. If you have any tutorials that you'd like me to make, head over to the video description and complete my tutorial request form. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk, you want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, if you want more tips, more tricks, and all the education on Power Director, then you got to watch more of my content so you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.